Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Wall Street Wildlife Podcast. We're here with a bonus catch-up. I'm Luke the Badger Hallard, and I'm joined by my co-host buddy, Christoph Monkey Pikarski. Um, Christoph, you've become a bit of a Bitcoin expert, it's particularly in the last couple of weeks. I know you've gone down the rabbit hole with Bitcoin miners. I saw Bitcoin ETF trending on Twitter today. What's going on? Why are people talking about Bitcoin suddenly? Yeah, so this is a pretty interesting moment in in the world, honestly. Uh, the crossroads is, will Bitcoin be officially sanctioned, so to speak, by regulatory agencies? Bitcoin, or its origins are all about independence from any governance, basically. So it's an alternative, alternate money system to current any national so- sovereign money. So it's attracted initially a lot of, call it sovereign-minded, independent, anarchist-type people, right? Um, not just anarchists, but there, there's there's a lot of philosophy behind it. So this crossroads right now is if Bitcoin gets accepted, then a whole bunch of big money players, think BlackRock, will have the uh, green light to set up Bitcoin ETFs which means the government is basically saying, yeah, this is now a legitimate asset class and go ahead, ye big money funds, buy, go forth and buy and it will be regulated like an ETF. So it's kind of like sanctioning it to be uh, no longer this kind of uh, backdoor financial pariah. Why does this matter? This matters because for investors, if you're looking to make money off of this thing, here's at least how I'm seeing it. If you look at the price of Bitcoin, from the technical perspective, it is up. Meaning, uh, since the lows, it's gone. I mean, it's up actually on all the time frames. It's, I think, the best performing asset class over the last however many years, right? But especially recently, it's gone up quite a bit. So that means it has a lot of strength. There's a lot of people buying it, fewer people selling it. That's obvious, right? But then ask yourself... When these ETFs get approved, which is looking highly probable, what does that mean? That means that Bitcoin will be forced bought by all these institutions. It's not, it's not so much as will they buy them or not. It's in order to have this ETF, you have to buy the, the product. So when you have a higher demand supply price is going to do what up now of course a lot of complex things unknowns unknowns could happen right but on the basic level the momentum is up and with approval the momentum i mean the pressure will increase even further you want to trade with the market basically and you're not buying bitcoin specifically we might have some but actually you're buying companies that are driving bitcoin mining what tell us a little bit about that yeah, sure. So, yeah, I do own a little Bitcoin myself because I believe the philosophy, but predominantly, I think there's a wider gap in value between the asset itself and how the asset is created. You cannot make Bitcoin without mining it. And there are there's a whole plethora of companies that their whole business model is basically buying the fastest technical setups they can get as efficient at running the the data centers and the better they are at that job, the more Bitcoin they actually produce, which is worth legitimate money. And right now there's this moment where the uh, creme de la creme are rising to the top and the poor performers are being outdone. And as far as I could tell, one way to really play Bitcoin in this moment is find what you think are the best Bitcoin miners and because they're only valued, many of them at in the hundreds of millions, uh, some, I think the top, top performers are maybe in the low billion or two, there's a huge delta. Be- I think the, the gap is over 45x between the value of the asset and, and the creator economy. So um, I personally have looked at Marathon and Bitfarm and Cypher. So it's M-A-R-A, B-I-T-F, and C-I-F-R 
as my three top picks in this Bitcoin mining space. Great stuff. Uh, before we wrap this one up, tell me then, am I a poor second class citizen with my Ethereum? Am I not going to get the same benefits that you Bitcoin guys are going to get? I think it's that's a great question, Badger. I think it's a whole different uh, analogy. They're two very separate things. I would not call you second class citizen. The analogy I make for understanding the uh, m the most legitimate players in crypto is that Bitcoin is digital gold, which has a very particular function. It functions as money, whereas Ethereum serves as the Microsoft of the crypto economy. In other words, they're the software program which allows all these other crypto functions to take place. So I don't think it's a bad idea to be invested in both of these classes because you're buying two very different things. Cool. Great. Great stuff. Well, you heard it here. First, uh, Christoph's recommended those three stocks will drop the tickers in the uh, show notes. And I uh, hope you got some value out of today's Wall Street Wildlife bonus episode. We'll see you next week for episode 10.